Outrage in Pakistan. Two Muslim clerics arrested for raping a 10-year-old boy. On April 30th, police in Pakistan arrested two Muslim clerics accused of raping a 10-year-old boy in a religious school located in the country's Punjab province. The sexual abuse allegedly occurred on April 29th, and the boy's uncle discovered the crime when he visited the school and found one cleric with his nephew while the other one waited his turn in a side room. The two suspects were arrested after an initial investigation, and the boy was sent to a local hospital for treatment of physical injuries and trauma. The Associated Press conducted an investigation into the growing sexual abuse in Pakistan's religious schools in May of 2020, where they found dozens of police reports accusing Islamic clerics of rape, physical abuse, and sexual harassment while teaching in Islamic religious schools or madrasas across different parts of the Muslim-majority country. Many of the students studying in madrasas are from low-income backgrounds. Their families, overcome by shame and fear of the stigma of being sexually abused that could follow a child into adulthood, are forced to drop the cases or are coerced into forgiving the accused clerics. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, so... Yeah, so here... No, here's the thing. First of all, right uh, let's be clear there's there's nothing in islam that says that you can do this right so let's be honest here right um the pro however the problem is here the uh, two first of all the within religious communities because clerics or priests get a level of trust that they don't deserve uh, that environment gets used um, because we we are there is this understanding that these are highly moral people that could be trusted that they're pure, and that level of trust is given to people who don't deserve it, and they can and that's why they're able to um, use that uh, trust to to take advantage of children. Uh, a lot of children are trusted, like within the secular world, when you trust people with children, they go through c certain um barriers that makes these type of activity less likely to happen and it doesn't completely eliminate it but it reduces it right but uh, within the religious world because certain people just because they recite verses or read ancient scripture that gives them certain trust as pure moral men and that level of trust that is undeserved give, gives that's not a that's not a good filter for people to for us to be able to understand whether or not we could trust them with children but people do and that's why this kind of misuse happens more often within religious communities that's one problem that you could attribute to islam even you know another problem that you could attribute to islam is the fact that uh, these people being religious men the religious community would like to hush it like would like to silence the fact that something like these happen right so if the, these were not religious men if they commit crimes like this it would be easier for that to get out and for people to punish it but because uh, you're religious you know you're clerics or imams or whatever uh, if you do this that leaking out is not just bad for you individually but it looks bad for the entire religion there's a higher motivation for the entire community to try to silence the people um from speaking out and that's another reason why islam here will become a problem for the whole situation so yeah so if people say that this is well, why are you blaming islam this is obviously not an islamic scripture this is what they're doing is considered a sin as islam that is true but because of those two reasons and some other few reasons that i could mention um islam is still to be blamed for act acts like this does that make sense mm -hmm. oh yeah i think mm -hmm. I, I want to go back and I want to read this full investigation that the Associated Press did in May of 2020 because I didn't actually realize how systemic this problem is in Pakistan. Like Oxymoron is saying, this is actually a very common trend in Pakistan. It's not as common in India or even many other Islamic countries. And I wonder why that is. I know that because civil institutions have, I mean, especially education in Pakistan has fallen apart to such a degree over decades that madrasas now provide some of the only education that many people can reach. I mean, which is partly how the Taliban, you know, became so influential is because of the schools and the resources that they were providing that the state and civil society couldn't. They're filling that gap, so to speak, and then radicalizing people. Is it because of that 
like kind of pre-existing system or those conditions that n- allows this to be so prevalent i'm i'm very curious about like what it could be here that makes it different than other places seemingly maybe it's not but i don't know what do you think yeah i don't know i have to watch can you send me that documentary that you mentioned i want to see that i have to yeah but but something for people to think about but um i i don't know much about this to be able to but we need to move on because i'm really yeah. running out of time wait really yeah. quickly bacha bazi what does that mean does that mean like boy play but yeah yeah uh, bacha bazi is the name they have for this in afghanistan and pakistan it's very very common it's very common like um the u.s uh, military was so shocked in afghanistan it, it, almost every single military commander that they had to work with um had kids that they the little boys as as sex toys Jesus. right and it's and so they brought them out for entertainment with the soldiers they made them dance for the soldiers and they put like lipstick and makes up makeup on them oh my god some of them were tied to their bed of the like the military commander that they, they were like chained to the bed and everything and these were allies of united states and it was it was so common people want to talk about degeneracy address- god sorry go ahead and it was so common that they, the U.S. military realized that this is not something that they could even challenge because they would have no allies. Like that's how widespread this was. So, it, or around Pakistan and Afghanistan, this is just such a, such a, such a sick thing that it's just, it's just normalized. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, Young Atheist is basically confirming my hypothesis. It's because the government are not providing education, so they have to join the madrasas, and then they're vulnerable. And Yeah. Yeah. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.